Welcome to the full story series right here at Comic Storian, where we take some of our older videos that we did in multiple parts and we turn them into a larger video for you. Today is not going to be that large, but when Infinity War came out, we did the Infinity Gauntlet storyline in a two-parter because cool things happened in both parts. Today we're going to put them together and we're going to make the Infinity Gauntlet full story. I hope you guys enjoy and let me know what your favorite part of the original story is versus what actually happened in Infinity War. As two men walk across a desolate planet, one tells the other that there is no denying it. Anything they wish to be, they are. Nothing in this universe dares challenge that claim. There is only one word to describe who they are. That is God. Hephaestus bows his head to Thanos and tells him that he is proud to be his first acolyte. Bask in the glory that is his divine presence. Thanos stares at the stone carving of the word God telling him the moment is upon them when the stars come to realize the absolute truth of my words. And with one wave of the infinity gauntlet, the stone carving shatters. Thanos says, None shall deny me my righteous place in the pantheon of cosmic gods. Meanwhile, down on Earth in the Sanctum Sectorium, the master of the Mystic Arts, Doctor Strange, enjoys a cup of tea while reading a book when he suddenly hears a loud crash. Doctor Strange grabs his cloak, shouting, By the Vashanti, who dare intrude on these premises? But as Doctor Strange flies over to the next room, he sees the one person that he expected to never see, the Silver Surfer. Doctor Strange and Wong quickly pick the Surfer up and place him onto the couch, and he calls out that he comes with a warning. A great danger is coming this way, and it must be stopped. His arrival could herald the end of the universe. Thanos is coming. Thanos, the being once thought dead, is no longer. Brought back by Mistress Death, the Mad Titan returned so that he may mold the universe to Death's liking. Death had but one task for Thanos. By giving him his greatly augmented power, Thanos is to slaughter half of the sentient population in the universe. But Thanos was too arrogant to be anyone's thrall, so he conceived a sinister scheme by gazing upon Death's Infinity Well. There he learned the Infinity Gem's true power, and he convinced Mistress Death that his task could not be carried out without them. After claiming the six gems, Thanos now has unbridled power, the power of a god. It could very well mean the end of all that there is. Not realizing the extent of Thanos' new might, the one called the Destroyer and himself confronted the Titan, an almost fatal miscalculation on their part. They were helpless puppets within his grasp, and he laughed as he toyed with them. But then he grew tired of them, and he used the soul gem to steal their spiritual essence. When they awoke, the Destroyer and himself found themselves in a metaphysical world within the soul gem, and inside of there was a man called Adam Warlock. It was through a spell casted by Warlock that allowed the Destroyer and himself to escape, which then he immediately set out for Earth. He wished to warn them. He prays that he is not too late. However, while the Silver Surfer tells Doctor Strange all that has happened back in the cosmos, Thanos returns to the mistress that he loves, seeking forgiveness in obtaining the Infinity Gems. In death's silence, she made it very clear she is not so forgiving. As Death turns her back to Thanos, he shouts, It was never my intention to wrong you. Your scorns wound me deeply. I only sought such glory in order to become worthy of your love. Your heart deserves better than a thrall. I had no choice but to become your equal. Death's servant corrects him, stating, Not equal, superior. Thanos turns back and the servant continues telling him, No mistress of death is nothing more than your love slave. That was a position that you created. Your love is like bondage. And Thanos yells, No! Death should be revered! Shrines should be built to her! Yes, shrines. And just as he thought that, so it became. And a shrine dedicated to his one true love, Mistress Death, appeared. He takes his seat on one of the thrones, calling to Death, and as she walks up, she glares at him and turns away. Thanos stands up asking, WHY?! And Mephesto tells him that perhaps it's because she does not yet realize the true stagnant depths of his black soul and what he is capable of achieving. Thanos says, Yes. Proof of my depravity is what is needed. With the power of the gauntlet, he brings forth a mangled being, one shard and twisted, and he tells Death to allow him to introduce her to Nebula, my granddaughter. Or so she claims to be. With my power and spirit, I sculpted Nebula into walking Death. Death looks at Nebula and then turns away, and Thanos shouts, Do not turn your back on me! Death's servant tells him that Mistress Death finds his boast empty, and his bravadier distasteful. 
Thanos stares at the servant, and just with a thought, the servant's decaying body explodes. Thanos then walks away and asks, What have I done to deserve such rejection? And Mephisto says, Perhaps it's what you haven't done that has riled the maiden so. And Thanos tells him, You're right, how inconsiderate of me. I've yet to complete the task that I was originally given. A lover should always follow through with a vow given. With that, Thanos walks down the steps, looking out into the cosmos, holding out his hand. Mephisto thinks to himself, He's really going to do it. And with that, Thanos snapped his fingers. Thanos' task was complete. And at that very moment, the superhero Spider-Man was out on patrol when he witnessed it himself. Half the people in the crowd disappeared. All across the world, people began to vanish. And Silver Surfer said that he could feel it all across the universe. People are being taken. Doctor Strange witnesses it firsthand at the sight of his servant and friend Wong disappearing. Silver Surfer then jumps up, grabbing Doctor Strange, yelling, They're all dying! Billions upon billions of souls are blinking out of existence. They're all a part of death now. With the collapse of the Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange calls upon the help of Hank Pym, who himself didn't know what he could say. It wasn't until Hank left that Doctor Strange's Minotaur servant started to act strange. Strange looked at him, but instead of hearing his servant talk, he heard another voice. The voice told him that he may be the only person who can stop the insanity that is Thanos, but only if he is the one to lead the champions of righteousness. Doctor Strange asks how are they supposed to trust a being that they cannot see, and the being says that he can open his soul to him to show him that he is just, but his soul will be barred to him. After a few moments of thinking, Doctor Strange says that the danger that confronts them is too great. He must take the risk. But if he senses any treachery, Doctor Strange then begins to look into the soul of the being, and as he snapped back to reality, Doctor Strange says that it's all clear now. He has his complete trust. He will aid him. While this is going on, other beings begin to try and make sense of what is happening, including Eros. But just as he started to think that this is the work of his brother, in a blink of an eye, he finds himself staring at his brother Thanos. Eros looks around and sees Mistress Death and the Nebula suffering. And Thanos yells, This is a family reunion! Let Nebula and yourself meet my new lover and mate, Death. Mephesto here is but an advisor. Eros asks, How can this be a family reunion without our father present? And Thanos tells him, It's because Mentor was not invited, nor will he be. Eros sees Thanos wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, and then he uses his powers of manipulation, stating that everything is going to work out just as he wants, and if there's anything. But just as he finishes his sentence, Thanos asks, Are you trying to use your emotional manipulating powers on me? Let me see how well you can charm without your mouth. And at that moment, Eros' mouth is removed. Later at the Sanctum Sanctorium, Surfer begins to open his eyes, and as he does, he sees a pair of eyes looking right back at him. He asks what happened. Why is Doctor Doom here? And Doom, using his bots to contain Doctor Strange and his servants, tells Surfer that he should enlighten him on what is happening around the world. Surfer jumps up shouting, Unhand Doctor Strange! But before he can get another word out, Doom blasts him, telling him that he shall fall victim to a superior intellect and power. Doom turns back to Strange, telling him that he will brief him on every detail that he knows about the great disappearance and forces behind it. But even before Strange can say a word, Doom's bots are ripped apart and a voice says that there is no need to threaten anyone, my good doctor. Doom spins back, asking, Who dares speak? And through the hole in the roof, Warlock says that it is his time. Many have called him Adam Warlock, and they may also do so if they feel inclined. While Warlock gets ready to gather Earth's forces, Thanos continues to display his frustration by releasing tantrums of displeasure, sending shockwaves across the universe. Those shockwaves easily destroy nearby planets and even shake the very core of the Earth. With most of New York falling to rubble, Warlock stands around stating that it appears everyone fared fairly well thanks to Doctor Strange's hastily casted spell of protection. The Minotaur servant then gets up asking what was that and Doom tells him obviously an earthquake. Pip the troll then says something must have really teed off a god. And Warlock says that is exactly what happened. Doom then says that it is time for action now, and Warlock tells him not yet. There are forces at work that you cannot even perceive. Curly, I am weaving a delicate strategy with which rash actions could rend. Patience is needed. Doctor Strange says they must trust Warlock. He too senses tremendous powers gathering for a final confrontation. And after flipping through the pages of a book, Warlock drops it, asking Doctor Strange if he's ready to be executing the next step of the plan. Strange holds his hand up, casting a teleportation spell stating ready and willing and over at the Avengers headquarters there's a flash of light as Doctor Strange brings the group in and Thor shouts who is that 
Captain America says that it appears the Golden Man is Adam Warlock, and She-Hulk adds, and that's Doctor Doom. Warlock tells them to stay thy hand. Doom is an ally in this struggle, and right now we are on a mission which has brought us here, and that mission is to create an army. With that said, Doctor Strange begins to open up portals, bringing forth all of Earth's remaining heroes. Once there, Warlock tells everyone that there are still a few more allies that they require the aid of, cosmic allies to be exact. Doctor Strange opens up another portal, and Warlock and Surfer jump through. On the other side, of space as a flash of light and Quasar asks if it's time yet. A warlock asks, have they not arrived? And Epoch tells him that the gathering has been awaiting his arrival. There's another flash of light and then appear many of the great cosmic beings. The great eternity calls out that he is the actuality Thanos strives to usurp. He comes seeking judgment from the one being he considers a peer. The living tribunal then says that they are present at eternity's request to hear his case. Speak now. Eternity then says that the mad titan seeks to unbalance that which is, to throw the nature of the universe into a maniacal entropy. The living tribunal tells him, I have considered the matter and cannot concur. Thanos only strives to replace eternity's importance with his own. Natural selection is one of the universe's oldest canons. The strong replace the weak. It is as it should be. No cosmic crime has been committed. The living tribunal shall not become involved in this matter. And as they disappear, so does eternity. And Warlock says that it mattered not. They will deal with the forces still available to them. The Watcher then says that he too cannot be counted among these numbers. He remains a Watcher and only here to observe and record. Warlock then says that it is sad, but nonetheless, the numbers that they have are more than sufficient to execute a plan of attack. Galactus then asks, do you expect Galactus to follow one such as you into battle? Galactus does not heed the empty words of insects, even golden ones. Warlock tells him then Galactus would be a fool, and a second later, Galactus blasts Warlock out of existence. Galactus turns back to the other cosmic beings, stating that they face a dire peril. Their defense would be more easily planned without the yammering of mortals to distract them. A voice calls out to Galactus, asking, Does Galactus let his anger so badly cloud his judgment? And Galactus asks, Is that with that warlock is sitting on his head telling him just the yammering mortal who knows that naked power is seldom the answer to any problem master order and lord chaos then tell galactus that they know of this adam warlock he is the one outside of the loop of destiny and capable of wondrous deeds they choose to join forces with him all of the cosmic beings soon agree to help with one of them left to agree Everyone looks at Galactus. And a short while later, out in space, Mephesto looks up asking how long has he been hovering there. Thanos tells him for a few moments, but the Watcher's coming heralds are the beginnings of hostilities. The heavens shall run red with blood. He turns to death, stating that his enemies will come for him. Will you stand by my side? But she remains silent and turns away. Thanos says that it is as he expected. If that's the case, he will create a supreme being worthy of his affection. As the Infinity Gems shine, there's a spark of light. And a woman steps forward as Thanos shouts, Death, meet Taraxia, the terrible. She is everything that my soul longs for. Taraxia is everything that you are not, and I am no longer in need of you. As Death turns to leave, Thanos stares, still wanting her affection. Down on Earth, Warlock rallies everyone together, stating that they must prepare themselves for battle, one that is most fierce and awesome. Doctor Strange begins to teleport them to Thanos' location, and a second spell will be cast, allowing them to breathe in space for 60 minutes. Doctor Strange shall remain behind to monitor and evacuate any combatant who is too injured to continue the struggle. And with that said, best of luck to all. As the portal opens, Warlock and Silver are the first to jump through, and just as the Surfer realizes that they are alone, Warlock asks, Can you see me? And the Surfer says yes. Thanos is looking in our direction, but I should not be in reserve. I should be a part of the battle. And Warlock says, you will be when the moment is right. Pip hits the timer for the breathing spell and tells everyone to get ready. And as the heroes all begin to jump through the portal, Warlock tells the surfer, our allies' power is less than nothing against Thanos. They stand defeated before the battle has even begun. The true purpose of their attack is merely diversionary. They are sacrificial lambs. And may the stars forgive me, for that is what I have planned. Thanos begins to fight off the swarm of heroes, and as he does, Mephesto whispers that he should hang on a moment. As Thanos freezes time, Mephesto goes on telling him that he has power without limit. These buffoons may prove useful in changing the current situation. Thanos asks how so, and Mephesto tells him, Courage, my liege! All female hearts, even one as cold as death's, are warmed by the sight of raw courage. 
Thanos says that he is right. He will shut off all of his powers except power. He will still remain strong, but unable to know what his enemies will do. This will give them 0.05% of winning. He snaps his fingers again, shouting, let the battle begin. As it resumes, Thanos continues to easily overpower the heroes. Across the way though, Silver Surfer watches and says that he should be there, fighting with his friends. Adam Warlock tells him that that would be utter folly. He has a major role to play in this little game. And at that moment, Wolverine jumps in, stabbing Thanos in the chest. But as Thanos smiles, Wolverine shouts in pain. His adamantium bones begin to transform into spongy rubber, and then his body falls mangled to the ground. The next to fall is Scarlet Witch. By having her magic reflected back at her, she ends up destroying herself. Cyclops shouts out for her, and he fires an optic blast. But as Thanos turns back, a clear box forms around Cyclops' head. While Cap tries to help Cyclops, Thanos turns and rips Vision's chest open, pulling out his circuits and his wires. As Thanos tosses Vision to the side, Cap shouts that Cyclops is dead. He has no air inside of there, you monster. Thanos tells him that was rather an unexpected emotional outburst, not one that I was expecting. Just as Thanos finishes though, Cloak appears behind him and pulls him into a dark and fearful dimension. A few seconds pass and Cap says, he really did it, but how long can Cloak hold him? And Cloak says, I'm not sure, I think, maybe. No! And at that moment, Cloak's body explodes. Thanos appears shouting, Supremacy cannot be imprisoned. My divinity is absolute. Fire Lord and the Destroyer lunge in for an attack, and as they do, Thanos opens up a portal, pulling the two back into Earth's prehistoric past. Torexia then runs up gleefully holding the head of Iron Man, stating, Look! I have dispatched the metal-clad nuisance! Thanos smiles and says, Thanks. You have proven to be exactly what I had hoped for. Just then, Thanos is hit in the face with a shot of webbing, and Spider-Man swings in, calling out to Thor that he's all his. Thor throws his hammer into Thanos, knocking him back, and as he does, Torexia grabs Spider-Man, pinning him to the ground. Thor stands over Thanos with his hammer in the air, shouting, It is time to end this! But before Thor can bring his hammer down, his body is frozen in place. As he is turned to glass, Torexia lifts the bloodied rock that she used to bash Spider-Man's head in, and Thanos smiles, getting ready to destroy Thor's glass body. Nova then quickly flies in to stop Thanos before he can even take a swing, but as he does, Thanos touches him, changing his body into a hundred little cubes. Thanos then stomps in the cubes and swings his arm, shattering Thor into a thousand pieces. As Thanos stands triumphant, Quasar shouts to turn and face him, so Thanos turns back and states that he must be Captain Marvel's replacement and Quasar yells, then the wielder of the quantum bands, and they will prove to be your downfall. Thanos looks at Quasar's hands, and a second later, they explode. Quasar falls to the ground screaming, and then Thanos releases another blast vaporizing him. As silence begins to fall over the battlefield, Captain America walks over to Thanos, telling him that as long as one man stands against him, he will never be able to claim victory. Thanos tells him that those are noble statements from one who is about to die. And as the stone reaches up to grab Cap, Thanos swings down, breaking his shield. Cap stands back up tall, ready to receive whatever Thanos could throw at him, but that's when Warlock shouts, NOW! Silver Surfer comes rocketing forward towards the fight, reaching out towards Thanos' hand. Before Thanos can strike, he notices a glint of light, and the Silver Surfer shoots by, missing the gauntlet. Thanos watches the Silver Surfer passes by, and Cap punches into Thanos. Without even looking back, Thanos swings his arm back, hitting Cap in the head, snapping his neck. Thanos then wishes for the battlefield to be clear, and with that, the bodies of the heroes disappear. Warlock then says they tried this the easy way and failed. Now it begins the conflict that he strove to avoid. It is time for the astral beings to make their move. Master Order and Lord Chaos yell out to Thanos that they call upon him to surrender the Infinity Gems or face power beyond his wildest dreams. Thanos tells them that he believes that they will discover that the horizons of his imaginings are far wider than they suspect. They address omnipotence. Tread carefully. Meanwhile, back away from the fight, Adam Warlock tells Doctor Strange to try and locate the heroes that he can for retrieval. The Cosmic Brigade has engaged Thanos. A few seconds later, Warlock and Silver Surfer feel the cosmic clash of Thanos and the others, and its power becomes overwhelming. The Watcher watches the conflict and says that the fear is growing in his heart. The fear that he is witnessing the end of the universe. But as the wave of destruction passes, Eros begins to open up his eyes, and he sees that he is in fact alive along with Nebula. The one who saved them was Mistress Death herself. Thanos continues to show off his power, paying no mind that he is ripping the entire universe apart by the seams. One after another, the cosmic beings fall before Thanos, not having the slightest chance of survival. But in the wake of Thanos' attack, he begins to feel fire, hell's fire. 
Thanos begins to ask what is this and Mephesto appears through the flames grabbing the gauntlet stating that he has come to relieve him of his burden of supremacy. Thanos continues to maintain control of the gauntlet grabbing Mephesto by the throat telling him that it is a responsibility that he is not quite ready to relinquish. However before Thanos could strike again he is hit with a blast of darkness and he looks up to see that it is death who fired it. Thanos asks you two betray me. I offered you the universe. At that exact moment the cosmic beings that Thanos thought to have bested all concentrate their attacks on him. Through the fire, Thanos smiles. And then moments later, those cosmic beings all fall under Thanos' control. He begins to laugh, shouting, I am Thanos! I am supreme. Just then, Eternity appears before him, and Thanos says that he was wondering when he would show himself. Eternity tells him that he has come to reclaim that which belongs to him, control of this reality. As the two entities collide, there's a brilliant white light that shoots throughout space, and Adam Warlock tells Doctor Strange to retrieve him at once. But as the light from Thanos' fight, there is one more added to his collection, Eternity himself. Terexia then runs over to Thanos' throne asking him to please say something and just then, Thanos' essence appears as Eternity's did, asking what would she have him say. The magnificent Thanos has rid himself of flesh. He has shed all vulnerability. It is at this time that one unlikely person begins to make their move. Nebula. Though thought to be mindless, she watched and waited and is now ready to act. Nebula smiles and reaches down, pulling the Infinity Gauntlet out of Thanos' physical body. And she puts it on. Her body begins to change back to normal, and as she shouts, she steps away from oblivion. Her every wish is but an urge away. Thanos stands up from his throne, and as he walks forward, Nebula asks, Do you know what I yearn for? Revenge! As she points at Thanos, he and Terexia disappear. And moments later, in the deep void of space, Thanos wakes up looking at Terexia, stating that he could not have the foresight to create her capable of surviving deep space without his aid. He shall miss her. And that's when she dies out there. But survival be not a treasured prize. This body shall endure long after my spirit succumbs to this exile that Nebula has banished me to, an infinity to mule over my own sins. Just then a portal opens up and Thanos begins to fall through the portal. He suddenly finds himself at the feet of Adam Warlock and he tells him, Welcome to Mother Earth. Thanos gets up asking, Why have you brought me here? But before Warlock could even answer, Silver Surfer lashes out shouting, So I might destroy you! As Silver Surfer and Thanos begin to clash, Warlock tells Doctor Strange that they will not be able to separate them, but he can summon those who can. Doctor Strange holds out his hands and he begins to cast another spell, and that's when a second portal opens with many of the heroes that we thought were killed in battle fall through. The heroes pull Silver Surfer and Thanos apart, and Warlock says that if they're done, they might be interested in how they might be able to save this universe from destruction. And then Thor says that this is exactly where the universe is headed with Nebula in control of the gems. Her intellect is not up to godhood. But before we continue, I need a word with Thanos alone. While Warlock begins to calm everyone down, Doom begins to ask how they can really go along with this new plan. Warlock is obviously Thanos' secret partner, but Thor pulls Doom out, and Doom continues telling everyone that they'll regret not hearing his warning! They used to be comrades! Thanos then tells Warlock, Well, comrade, what now? What benefits so I reap from Nebula's defeat? Warlock asks him, The truth? Yourself. And Thanos asks, What? Do you have some kind of special insight into this matter? And Warlock tells him, Yes, I was a part of the Soul Gem while you possessed it, which permitted me access to your inner heart. I know you as no other being in the universe does. Looking back, Thanos of Titan, what do you see? A man who is always seeking ultimate power, losing it as soon as he attains it? Why? It is because deep down in your soul, you know you are not worthy of it. Three times you have triumphed over incredible odds, and three times you have supplied the means to your own defeat. You let Nebula wrest the Infinity Gauntlet from you just as you allow Captain Marvel to shatter the Cosmic Cube. Thanos steps back, telling him, No, it was a mistake. Even gods, I, I didn't. I will aid you. Back out in space, Nebula looks at the stars and says that in exact five seconds she'll be receiving visitors. In five seconds, the portal opens with Earth's heroes charging out at Nebula. At that exact same moment in time, Nebula uses the stones to reach out and grab a hold of the heroes. She points out, stating that there are more, three more who wish to challenge her. And then she points, and it's Warlock, Doctor Strange, Silver Surfer, and Thanos. Surfer pauses for a moment, thinking, 
three, but there are four of us. And Nebula begins to encase Thanos in stone, and as she does, Warlock begins to walk around her. Doctor Strange telepathically tells Silver Surfer that Warlock is standing on the outside. As Warlock watches, Thanos continues to taunt Nebula, stating that she has no vision on how to use the gems. Just look at what great deeds I have accomplished with the gauntlet! And Nebula shouts, asking, what deeds? Killing off half the universe? By the powers of the Infinity Gems, I will see it undone. Warlock motions to Doctor Strange to prepare his spell, and Nebula calls out that she will put things back to the way they were 24 hours ago. In that instant, the wish becomes reality and half the universe is resurrected. Even as that happens, though, Thanos laughs, telling her, you may have wished for that, but you didn't take into account your own well-being. Thanos looks down at Nebula's charred and twisted body as it was 24 hours ago, and he reaches for the gauntlet, but a second later, Later, she returns to her lively self, placing Thanos back into stone. She says that it was a mistake that could be corrected with just a thought. But just then, Adam Warlock reaches out, touching the gauntlet, and as Nebula feels it, she fires off a blast into Silver Surfer's chest. Warlock is knocked away, and as Doctor Strange kneels down, Nebula asks, How are you even here? Of course! the magician. Nebula then encases Doctor Strange's hands, and Thanos tells her that she has truly been fortunate so far. But as she is about to learn, some mistakes are worse than others. Nebula looks back and sees all of the cosmic beings staring straight down at her. There's another flash of light, and as Silver Surfer opens up his eyes, he finds himself back in the Soul World with Adam Warlock. Surfer asks why they're there, and Warlock tells him that it is because his powers are greater here. Because this is all a part of the plan. Right now, he is in need of his assistance. He he needs him to be a spiritual anchor. While Nebula fights against the cosmic beings, Warlock explains that he knew the outcome of the fights with Thanos, as well as him losing the gauntlet. However, the universe needed saving. Warlock's body begins to grow, and it stands large enough to stand tall in the Soul Gems universe. In a flash, he disappears, and Surfer shouts, asking where did he go? Warlock's voice projects out into space, yelling, nowhere, everywhere! I am at one with the universe of the Soul Gem, from the one that I reach out to the five. Back in reality, Nebula encases the cosmic beings in stone, shouting that she is the omnipotent Nebula. She turns to Thanos, stating that he now bears witness to the birth of the Astral Dynasty. What say him? Through Thanos, Warlock shouts that there will be disharmony. Suddenly, the gauntlet explodes with power, and it falls to the ground. That disharmony, that weird vibe between all of the gems, caused it to break. With the power of the gauntlet, everyone begins to break three, all trying to claim it. But as they reach out, there's a flash of light, and Adam Warlock stands over everyone, wearing the gauntlet. He tells them, let the conflict end. He looks at the cosmic beings and he wills them free and then everyone stares at Warlock. Nebula asks, are you fools? Are you going to let him take the power? What right does he have to take it? And Warlock tells her, I have the right of possession. That is enough. The infinite power is now Adam Warlock. Seek not to dispute that claim. As Warlock makes his claim, Hulk and the Destroyer turn to Thanos and shout that they have unfinished business. But as they reach out for him, Thanos knocks them both away with one swing, telling them to unhand him. And he presses a button along his belt. He then suggests that they put some distance between him and themselves. A thermal nuclear device on my person has just been set to detonate in 15 seconds. Surfer asks why would he do that, and Thanos says, because I would rather have death than imprisonment. Thor quickly spins his hammer, throwing it into Thanos' stomach and launching him into the stars. The belt explodes, and as everyone watches, Eros says that that is exactly what he would have expected from Thanos. He steps forward, stating that as a representative of the sovereign state of Titan, he now claims custody of Nebula so the Titan may judge and imprison her. Warlock snaps his finger, stating so be it, and suddenly they disappear. Doctor Strange then says that they're still here, why? And Warlock tells him it's because each of them have gazed into the depths of his heart. Now they will go forth and tell the masses that Adam Warlock is a god who can be trusted. Doctor Strange tells him that he is not so sure that they can be truthful there. That power corrupts is a truism that cannot be ignored. Warlock then asks, do you fear I cosmic despot? Surely you must realize that even before Thanos, you lived under such tyranny. Thor tells him, yes, it was a benign rule, random and unfocused. And Warlock then asks, now that it is calculating, you find that unsettling? Afraid of replacing your usual chaos with order might prove unpalatable? The three begin to charge towards Warlock, and as he wishes, they disappear, and they are replaced with Pip and Gomorrah. A few seconds later, he then teleports everyone to an unnamed planet 60 days into the future, and Gomorrah then asks why they're here. Warlock tells her that they're paying a visit, and as Pip looks out on a field, he sees something and shouts Thanos. The three walk up, 
and Warlock says that he is merely an empty shell, nothing but a scarecrow. The three begin to walk towards a small house, and Thanos steps out, stating that he should have known that he couldn't fool him. Warlock then tells him he knows well enough that there are no secrets that can be held from him. Warlock then sits down on the steps, stating that he has not come seeking revenge, but advice. Thanos laughs, telling him that if he cannot endure it, to surrender the power. He knew that that would be the answer, so why ask? Warlock gets up telling him that those are puny words of comfort. And Thanos then asks, where does the Supreme Being go from here now? Warlock says to confrontation to resolution, then back to another confrontation. Such is my lot. Time has taught you the folly of such existence, has it not? Thanos tells him that three failures of such scope are enough for even him. A quiet life will allow him to digest and incorporate the lessons that have passed and have been forced upon him. Warlock waves and then says that he wishes him the best of luck, and as the three walk away, Pip then asks, why the heck did he let Thanos live? Warlock tells him that he is merely a piece like all the others, and a mosaic that is the universe. Without Thanos, the picture is incomplete, and with that, the three disappear. Thanos sits down on his stoop, thinking that Adam Warlock was a man who wanted nothing more than to live peacefully inside of the soul gem. He now possesses infinite power with all the responsibility that comes with it, yet strangely, he does not envy him. Somehow, it is as if Thanos is the one who came out ahead in this long run after this particular ordeal. And there you have it, a shorter full story, but a full story nonetheless. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys next time right here at Comic Story.